Now the last of the pure decision rules is something called the internal rate of return rule, more commonly known by its initialism IRR. And if the net present value rule is the golden rule of project decision making, the IRR is the silver rule. It's the next best thing. In fact, it's not really an alternative to net present value as much as it is something that we solve for in conjunction with net present value. We almost always are going to solve for internal rate of return and net present value at the same time. It's because it tells us something slightly different about the project, and both things are valuable. The other reason is because we use the same level of information and almost the same level of assumptions that we do to solve for the internal rate of return as we do to solve for the net present value. So we might as well, after we've done all the work and time and effort to make pro forma accounting statements and to make assumptions about the future and about the risk of the project, we might as well solve for the internal rate of return as well as the net present value. And we'll do that using the calculator and, and, and you'll see why. So we're going, to follow, we're going to follow the same project that we've been doing, cash flows, initial cost, and then three years of positive cash flows. We want to know what the internal rate of return is, and we want to know based on the internal rate of return rule, do we accept the project or reject it? So the only way really to do the, net, the internal rate of return is to solve using the calculator. There is no uh, direct method like with uh, net present value. And we solve for it in the same environment. Again, we're going to solve for these almost always do it together. And that means we can go into the same environment to solve. Right? So we go into the cash flow environment. We clear our previous work using second and the clear button. So we need to clear work. Then we enter in our cash flows in exactly the same way that we did for net present value. So starting with the initial cash flow, which is the initial cost of the project, CF0. That's $165,000. And again, we need to make it a negative because this is a cash outflow as a cost. And the calculator wants cash outflows as negative inputs. We set that value with the enter button and we move on with the down arrow. The next thing we see is C01, where C01 is the initial or the first cash flow rather. And the first cash flow is the first positive cash flow and that's 63,120. That's an in of a cash inflow, so we leave as a positive amount. We set that value with the enter button and we move on with the down arrow. The next thing we see is F01 and F01 is the frequency of the first cash flow and the frequency of the first cash flow is one. This cash flow doesn't repeat nor do any of the three the remaining cash flows. So we're going to leave all of the frequencies in this problem at the default value of 1. Oh, we don't have to press enter because we're leaving it as the default. It won't affect anything if we did press enter. We press the down arrow to move on and we see C02. C02 is the second cash flow and the second cash flow is 70,800. We do need to set that value with the enter button and move on with the down arrow. F02 is the frequency of that cash flow. We leave it at the default. We don't need to do anything but move on with the down arrow. C03 is our third and final cash flow, and our third cash flow is 91,080. And again, once we have entered our final cash flow in these problems, we can stop, and we can move on directly to what we want to solve for. And here what we want to solve for is the internal rate of return. And we just press IRR the IRR button, and when we do that, we'll see IRR equals zero. And all we need to do to solve is press compute. And you'll notice that it thinks for a little while, and it spits out an answer, 16.1322%. This is the internal rate of return of the project. And the IRR rule says, accept any project, if the internal rate of return is greater than the required rate of return. And so we're going to accept this project because the internal rate of return of 16.1322 is greater than the required return of 12%.
Now I can show you how to do that on the calculator. We open up and we start by going to the cash flow environment. Notice that we still have all our values because this is the same problem as the one we worked before. But I'll start by clearing it as if this was a different problem. So we press second and clear button. CF0 is our initial cash flow and our initial cash flow is the cost of the project, which is 165,000. We need to make it a negative. So we set the negative value and we set that using the enter button. We press the down arrow to move on and C01 is our first cash flow. And our first cash flow is 63,120. We set that value using the enter button. We move on. F01 is the frequency. We leave it at the default. This cash flow does not repeat. C02 is the second cash flow, 70,800. We set that value with the enter button. We move on with the down arrow. F02 we leave as the default. Again, this cash flow doesn't repeat. And we press the down arrow to enter our final cash flow, C03. 91,080 is the final cash flow. And once we've entered the final cash flow, we can stop. We can move on to what we are trying to solve for in the cash flow environment. And here we're trying to solve for the internal rate of return. So we can press IRR and compute. And notice it thinks for a little while, and it gives us the answer, 16.1322. Now again, we solve for internal rate of return and net present value in conjunction almost all of the time. And what's nice about the calculator environment here is that I can solve for either one using the same inputs without having to do anything else. So I just solve for internal rate of return, but I can press MPV here, enter the discount rate, which is 12%. and then compute the net present value, and I'll see that I got the net present value from the previous problem, 12,627.41. So we should have a short, short discussion about what the internal rate of return actually is. Again, as you'll see from the lecture, the internal rate of return is the rate, the discount rate, that would set the net present value of the project equal to zero. And you can see what happens when we look at the formula for net present value. So the formula for net present value, as we've written before, is the sum of the present value of the future cash flows minus the initial cost of the project. And if we write that out more formally, I can write out for our three cash flow project that we've been looking at, the present value of the first cash flow using the present value formula plus the present value of the second cash flow using the present value formula plus the present value of the third cash flow. This is the sum of the present values of the future cash flows minus the initial cost. The internal rate of return solves the net present value equation for R for such R that sets net present value equal to zero. In other words, we rewrite the equation, set MPV equal to zero as such zero equals the sum of the present values of the future cash flows minus the initial cost of the project. And we solve for the R that makes this formula true. And mathematically, this is not an easy thing to do. In fact, there's no analytical solution here. And so the reason why the calculator takes some time to, th to get the internal rate of return answer is because it solves this by guessing and checking. So it plugs in 0, and then 1, and then 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, all the way up until it reaches 16.1322 for the value of R. And you can check that this is true if we go back to our calculator. 
Notice that the internal rate of return here is 16.1322. When we solve for the net present value, we use the required rate of return, 12%. But the internal rate of return is the rate that would set NPV equal to zero. In other words, if I put in 16.1322 as my required rate of return and recalculate the net present value, I should get close to, or effectively, zero NPV. And that's why we use the both of these functions together.